All right, we are moving right along. We only have a couple lessons left in um, seventh grade math. So let's move on with appropriate measures. We are going to move to the end and look up our three vocabulary words, which they don't have here. This is the first time we don't have vocabulary words at the end. So let's go back. We have measures of center, measures of variability, and outlier. Okay, we will go through those in the lesson. In this lesson, our objective is to determine if mean or median is an appropriate measure to summarize the numerical data on a histogram, box plot, line plot, or stem and leaf plot, taking the context and any outliers into consideration. Our other objective is to determine if range or interquartile range is an appropriate measure to summarize numerical data on a histogram, box plot, line plot, or stem and leaf plot, taking the context and any outliers into consideration. <clears throat> so we have um, determining the best measures for numerical data and line plots. When determining which measure of center and measure of variability best describes a data set, you can use the shape of the distribution of the data to assist you. So what that means is if the distribution is very symmetric, so the same amount on the left side, the same amount on the right side, the best measure of center would be the mean. Um, the best measure of spread would be the range. OK, so it, just in case you're not sure, a measure of center is mean or median. A measure of spread is range or interquartile range. <clears throat> so if we have symmetric data, so we've got maybe some stuff here and then some stuff here. It's very, you know, if we cut it in half, it's like a mirror image of itself. So that would be symmetrical. If we have a uh, skewed data, so we got a couple little things here and then we've got a lot of data over here. Notice it's skewed to the right. The median would be the better measure of center, and the interquartile range would be the better measure of spread. If we have any outliers, so let's say we've got a lot of numbers here. And then let's say we've got one number way up here. That would be an outlier. And the best measure of center would be the median, and the best measure of spread would be the interquartile range. So thinking like a mathematician, <clears throat> would there ever be a time when you would want to use the opposite measure to represent a data set? Based on the situation, the measure you choose may be the opposite than expected if you were trying to convey a different message. So a student has the following grades, 45, 50, 55, 60, and 95. Would they use the median if they wanted a true sense of, I'm sorry, they would use the median if they wanted a true sense of what their grade should be. But if they wanna tell their parents what their, what their grades are, they might use the median to show that their grades are a little higher. So even though median, because there is that big outlier, the 95, median is the one we should use. But the mean would show us a higher score. <clears throat> Learn to determine the best measure from a set of numerical data. The table represents the number of math problems a student can solve in five minutes. What is the outlier in this set? Take a second, look at the table, and find the outlier. It's 25. All the other numbers are in the tens, but 25 is like almost double most of the other numbers. Let's find the median and the mean, okay? So the median's pretty easy, but we need to put the numbers in order. So we've got 12, 13, 13, 13, 14, 14, and 14. Then we've got 15, two 16s, and then our 25. 
So we can do our median, cross off the highest, lowest, highest, lowest, highest, lowest, until we get the middle number. So the median is 14. Now let's take out our calculators and add, to find the mean, we're gonna add all the numbers together. So 12 plus 13 plus 13 plus 13 plus 14 plus 14 plus 14 plus 15 plus 16 plus 16 plus 25 gives us 165. So we're adding up all the numbers, we get 165. And there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven numbers. So 165 divided by 11 gives us a mean of 15. So the median is 14, the mean is 15. And these are the measures of center. Okay, which one do you think is best to use? Remember that chart we saw? If it has an outlier, it's better to use the median. <clears throat> so we're going to list it from least to greatest. We see all that. We find the mean and the median. Now, the mean of the data without the outlier adds up all the numbers except the outlier and then divides it by 10, not 11, because there were only 10 numbers that we added, not 11 numbers. The median will be the same when you list the values without the outlier. Okay, we're not really gonna have to do that too often. They really just want you to see that the mean does change when we don't use the outlier, but the median doesn't. That's why the median is the better measure of center when there's an outlier around. All right, reminder, recall that the five pieces of information that make the five number summary and how to find them. So the, this is when we're doing range and interquartile range and the box plots. So we need to find the minimum number, which is the smallest number. We need to find the lower quartile, which is the middle number of the bottom half of the data. The median is the middle number. The upper quartile <clears throat> is the middle number of the upper part of the data, and the maximum is the biggest number. So the me minimum, maximum, and median are pretty easy. The weird ones are that lower quartile and upper quartile. So it's not always so easy to determine if data value is an outlier or not. What if it's just a little bit bigger than the rest of the numbers? So the values of that quarter one, quarter three, and interquartile range can assist us in finding the outliers of a data. So a data value is considered to be an outlier if it lies one and a half times the interquartile range below quarter one or above quarter three. Okay, so we have this formula. You heard the word formula, so please write it down. So we're going to use the following data <clears throat> that represents the number of feet jumped by an amateur snow skier to determine the boundaries of the outline outliers. So they gave us the minimum, they gave us the Q1, they gave us the median, they gave us the Q3, and they gave us the maximum. All we need to do <clears throat> is take the formula and decide if the value, and, and we're going to figure out the number so we have Q1, 125, minus 1 1.5 times the IQR, and the interquartile range is Q3 minus Q1. So it would be times 68. So when we plug in those numbers, we get 125 minus 102, and we get 23. <clears throat> Any number below 23 would be an outlier for whatever data this goes with. <clears throat> we don't, they didn't give us the other data, so we don't really know. But any number below 23 would be considered an outlier. <clears throat> now, as far as an outlier for the upper part of the data, we take that Q3 plus 1.5 times the IQR, which is Q3 minus Q1. When we solve that, we get 295. 
So any number greater than 295 would be considered an outlier. <clears throat> In this data set, the maximum value is 298. So that means the maximum number is an outlier. The minimum's good, it's 85, and it had to be below 23 to be an outlier. <clears throat> I wish they'd given us data because I think it would help us to see the data and the minimum, maximum, median, all that good stuff. It is important to remember that there could be other data values that are also outliers in this set of data. The entire data set is not seen, so we can only state that 298 is an outlier, but maybe there's more. <clears throat> so learn to determine outliers from a line plot using upper and lower boundary values. So 20 people were asked how many hours they exercise each week. Okay, use the IQR to determine if there's any outliers in the data. <clears throat> determine what is the best measure of center, mean or median, and variability, that would be range or IQR, interquartile range. To answer part A, we need to take the time to list the numbers in order from least to greatest. So one, we would write down one, two, 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 three, three, four, four, five, 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 six, 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 seven, 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 eight, eight, nine. We have to write it down, okay? It's really hard to solve math problems at this point in the year without writing things down. When we want to find the median, we can cross out these numbers. It'll take a while because there's quite a few numbers. So the median is five. Using, um, so, and it's, I kind of write all over my numbers, but remember I can erase. So make sure that you either put marks above it or put marks below it. And then um, using the data below the median. Okay, so this is that bottom half. This is that Q1. Now we find the median of that part. So we find that the Q1 is three, the median is five, and then we can do the Q3 with the upper half of the data. And we find that that's seven. And the IQR is just Q3 minus Q1. That's how we find the IQR the interquartile range. Then we can use the formula to determine what is a lower boundary and what is an upper boundary as far as outliers go. So any number below negative three would be considered an outlier. Any number above 13 would be considered an outlier. Since the line plot is showing all the data and there's no numbers above 13 or below three, this data has no outliers. To answer part B, we're gonna use those numbers to find the mean, the median, the range, and the IQR. So since there's no outlier, the best measure of center would be the mean. The variability, the best measure of variability would be the range. All right, take a second to go to page three and work out the line plot and answer the questions. Determine if there's outlier using the IQR, what is the best measure of center, and what is the best measure of variability. Now on page four, determine the best measure from a stem and leaf plot, box plot, and histogram. Okay, so group, a group of 20 students each flip a coin 30 times. The stem and leaf plot show the results of how many times each student got tails. Remember, this would be 8, 9, 10, 10, 11, 12, 14, 16, 17, 19, 20, 20, 21, 23, 23, 25, 27, 27, 
28 and 29. We want to put them in order <clears throat> so that we can find the mean, the median, the Q1, the Q3. It really, really helps us by putting it in order. I really don't know how you would get it if you didn't put it in order. Okay. So they've given us here the minimum, the maximum, the Q1, the Q3. Let's just review it again how we got that. Obviously, the minimum was easy. It's eight. The maximum is easy. It's 29. The median, oh, this is a good one to show you because the median is not, um, it's not a whole number. And let's see if you remember what we do when we have two numbers stuck in the middle. So we have 19 and 20, both are our middle numbers. We don't have an odd set of numbers here. We have an even set of numbers. So we're gonna add 19 plus 20 and divide it by two which gives us 19.5. Now, let's find the median. Let's find our Q1, the median of the lower numbers. Oh. Hold on, we are going to use the 19 this time, because 19 isn't our median, 19.5 is our median. So we're gonna cross off the highest, the lowest, the highest, the lowest, the highest, the lowest, the highest, the lowest. And we have two numbers again. So we're gonna add them together, divide by two, and that will give us our Q1. Then we need to find our Q3. We're gonna have the same problem. So we're gonna do 23 plus 25 divided by two and we get 24. Our interquartile range is going to be 24 minus 11 and a half, which will give us 12 and a half. Now we can use the formula to find the upper and lower boundaries for outliers. So Q1 is 11.5 minus 1.5 times 12.5. We solve it and we get negative 7.25. Any number below negative 7.25 is an outlier. Then we repeat with the Q3 formula, the upper boundary formula. So 24 plus 1.5 times 12.5 gives us 42.75. Any number above 42.75 would be an outlier. We don't have any number in the negatives and we don't have any number over 29. So we don't have any outliers in this data. Now the box plot's kind of nice because it's giving us the lowest number, the highest number, the median. Remember these lines here, whoops. These lines here are giving us the minimum, the maximum, the median, Q1, Q3. So the only thing we have to do is find the IQR, okay? So it would be 21 minus nine. What's happening here? Oh, they're doing Lakeside and I was doing Bayview. Okay, so here is the information for Lakeside. And then you plug it into your formula. So we would see that there is 29.5 is the upper boundary. And there is a number in that's 30. So that would be considered an outlier. Now that it has an outlier, it means that the median and the IQR are going to be the best measure for center and the best measure for variability. Now let's look at the histograms. We have class A is evenly spread out. So that's that symmetrical data. We see class B has more of a skewed data. There's a lot more 40 to 49s 
than there are anywhere else. So that data is skewed. So class A is symmetrical, class B is skewed. So go back to your table and look to see what is the best measure. <clears throat> then pause your video, go to page five and solve these two problems. Take your time to write out the information in your notes. Now we have real world situation. The following data represents monthly sales for a six month period for two different employees and they made box plots for them. Woo, we can see the first employee has quite a big range. The second employee has a very small range. Just look how spread out employee one is. So it would, it would appear that employee one is a better salesperson due to the maximum sale value that they have. But is it possible that that maximum value is just an outlier and it's skewing the data? It's pulling the data over a little bit. <clears throat> so let's evaluate the data to see if there's any outliers. So write out the numbers. We know that employee one had sales of 2,000, 1,250, 2,350, 3,000, 1,870, and 2,150. So we could find the IQR right here. We've got the, sorry, we've got the Q1 and the Q3. We could subtract that to get the IQR. All right, so 1,870. Is going to be that Q1 and Q3 is going to be that 2,350. And we could subtract those. And that's where we get that 480. Okay, so then we plug in our numbers and any number below 1,150 is going to give us <clears throat> an outlier. Then we do the upper boundary and any number above 3,070 is going to be an outlier. And if we look at our data, it was 3,000, not 3,070. So it is not an outlier. <clears throat> We're gonna repeat it for employee two and we can see that employee two has no outliers in their data either. The range for employee one is 1,750 and the range for employee two is 700. Remember, the range is just the biggest number minus the smallest number. So biggest number minus the smallest number, that gives us the range. For employee two, same thing. It's the biggest number minus the smallest number to get the range. The interquartile range is that upper quartile minus the lower quartile. Employee two has a smaller range. So employee two is more consistent with their sales. That means when they make a sale, they're making pretty much the same amount of sale every time. But employee one has a very big range, which means sometimes they sell a lot, but sometimes they only sell a little bit. Now, take a second, go to page seven and do the five practice problems on this page. Making sure you write and label like, hey, practice number one, show your work. Practice number two, show your work. Practice number three, show your work. And on and on. It's really important to write down your notes. Make sure that you have the key points written down in your notebook and then good luck on your assignment.